Hi everyone. Uh, in this lecture, I thought I'll just uh, discuss a few points uh, which which I didn't stress upon in the previous lecture on the output resistance of uh, common common gate amplifiers. So if you look at this, if you look at the uh, the test setup that we discussed in the last class for the output impedance measurement, what we discussed is that we have to inject a current with DC zero DC value and one ampere AC magnitude. Okay, so let's say we just want to measure the input impedance of a uh, sorry the impedance at if we have a circuit and uh, we want to measure its impedance between two terminals. Then what we have been discussing so far is that we used to apply a test voltage source Vx and then we measured the current that is being drawn by this by between the two terminals. So using that we can also I mean use the similar procedure in an, in an AC simulation and then apply a test voltage source. I mean here the other terminal we are interested in finding is ground, AC ground. And then we can apply an input signal and then draw, find the current being drawn by that. The ratio of the voltage by current will give us the impedance at that point. Okay, with respect to ground. Now the problem with this is, um, I mean of course this, this looks like a nice procedure to do from circuit analysis point of view. But in an actual circuit what happens here is that uh, the AC source when you connect it in a simulator, this is going to have a certain DC value. Okay, so let's assume it's a zero DC value. Then we are forcing this by, by just directly connecting this, we are forcing this node, the drain node to be at zero volts. So we have to avoid that. Uh, so to avoid that, normally we'll have to capacitively couple it. We can actually capacitively couple it, couple the input and then try to find the current which is, make this, I mean, make sure this capacitance is very large. Uh, See, for example, if let's say R out is the impedance you are measuring, the frequency at which you are measuring, so for example, for this capacitor, C here, and the R out will form a high pass filter. So the pole formed by this high pass filter should be much lower than the frequency at which you are measuring the resistance. Okay. And also, if you remember, I said that uh, since it's resistive impedance that we are interested in finding out, we should ensure that the current and voltage are in, I mean, uh, when, I mean, uh, that should be a good indication that the if the current and voltage are in the same phase, then it's an indication that the impedance we are seeing is purely resistive. Okay. So uh, again, if you take all this care, then we can directly divide the current from the voltage and you get the impedance from an AC simulation. But to avoid, I mean, uh, of course, this is also one way of doing it. To avoid this, I, I chose a, a simpler approach. So the simpler approach is to directly connect a current source we can just choose a simpler approach, a current source with zero DC value, okay, and AC magnitude should be one. When you choose this, again, a zero DC current is not going to affect the circuit at all. So there is no, it's not going to affect the DC operating point of the circuit. So that's, that's what I wanted to be very clear about. So when you, the reason why we capacitively coupled an AC voltage source is that we didn't want to interfere with the DC operating point of the circuit. So now when you connect this current source, uh, it's not going to alter its DC operating point with a zero DC current value. At the same, uh, I mean, and when we apply an AC well, AC value of one ampere, okay. So and then find the voltage at this node with respect to ground. So then the voltage will simply be I AC into ZFS. Since I AC is one, okay. In AC analysis, essentially it sweeps uh, the circuit over a range of frequencies um, with amplitude same amplitude given by the AC magnitude value. So since IAC is going to be one, this is from a circuit simulator point of view, this is one for all those frequencies, the voltage you read will be sim directly be equal to the impedance. Okay, so that's why it's it's more a simpler approach, so I prefer doing this. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's about the setup for measuring the resistance, uh, which I thought uh, probably I didn't explain it very clearly in the previous picture. The next point uh, is a different way of looking at the output impedance of a common gate amp output resistance of a common gate amplifier. So before I derive that result, uh, I just quickly want to recall a very standard theorem from circuit analysis. Uh, it's called the star, or star delta transformation theorem. So say we have three impedances, Z1, Z2, and Z3 connected in this connection. So this is called as a star connection okay or y connection so this i'll call this node 1 node 2 and node 3 okay we can equivalently represent it as 
a delta connection so wherein we are going to have impedances between the two terminals 1 and 2 1 and 3 and 2 and 3 so I'll call this impedance as Z12, Z23 and Z31. Okay. So we can actually for circuit analysis, we can represent, uh, we can model this star connection that's shown in yellow here into the delta connection. So this forms a delta. So these two are equivalent. Okay. From these two connections are actually equivalent. And the transformation result is that Z12 is given by z1 plus z2 plus z1 z2 by z3 that's the impedance seen between terminal 1 and terminal 2 okay can be very easily shown to be this again this is a very standard uh, circuit analysis theorem uh, you can refer to any textbook so this is called the star delta transformation so now i'll use a star delta I mean, what's what's the star delta transformation got to do with common gate amplifier so we'll try to derive the expression the output resistance of a common gate amplifier using the star delta transformation so let so here i'll now uh, show the resistance r not here as well so we'll treat this terminal this terminal and this the third terminal as the common terminal i mean the center node here okay then so i'll call it one two here so with, this is what we are trying to find r out between these two terminals so we have R0 here and RS, which is between the center node and node 2. Now, if you look into this source terminal, if you look into the source terminal, the impedance seen at that terminal is 1 by GM. Okay, with respect to ground, the impedance seen in that terminal is 1 by GM. Okay, so this gate is at ground. And uh, I'll not even ground this. I can directly connect these two as and say that, you know, I'm trying to find the R out between these two terminals. Okay. So in that case, now if we try to find the impedance between these two terminals, so this is terminal one and two as shown in this figure here, one and two, I'll have to apply the star delta transformation. So then this is like a star connection. So Z12 is your R out. That's the output impedance between terminal one and terminal two okay again terminal 2 is ground in this case so i can use the star delta transformation and write it as r naught plus rs plus r naught rs by the third impedance which is 1 by gm so you will actually get r naught plus rs plus gm r naught rs so this expression can be written as R0 plus RS into 1 plus GM R0. Okay. Again, uh, this is the expression for output resistance of a common gate configuration, which we are already aware of how to uh, derive this result. Okay. So uh, that's it about the common output resistance of a common gate amplifier. I just forgot to mention this uh, different way of looking at the output resistance, deriving the same result for output resistance of a common gate using a star delta connection. I mean the star delta transformation theorem. So in the next lecture, I'll start with uh, the loaded gain of a one. Now that we have discussed input and output resistance of a common gate amplifier, we'll now discuss the loaded gain of a common gate amplifier.